Welcome to Free Pilot Training. You know, this video is probably going to make some people really mad at me, but hear me out. Today, I'm going to explain why normal landings should not be made with power off. And if you do this, not only is it wrong, but it's extremely dangerous. Alright, airspeed's coming alive, oil pressure's in the green. Airs rotate. Safely airborne. Landing lights off. Flaps up after takeoff checklist is complete. Climbing out to 70 knots. So just recently, I started getting a lot of comments on my landing videos saying that normal landings should be made without power. Now, normally I'd say there's more than one way to skin a cat, but after a little thought and quite a bit of research, I realized that not only is this wrong, but it's actually really, really dangerous. Now, I'm using the terminology power off landings very loosely today. What we're actually talking about is power off approaches. And I just want to mention that because I do recommend touching down with idle power when you're making a normal landing. And we might talk about one or two reasons why here in just a second. But for now, let's pull out the airplane flying handbook and take a look at a couple things in there. If you've never looked at this book, I highly recommend you grabbing a copy. It's super handy when you're just getting started. If you look in section 9, there's a lot of detail on how to make approaches and landings. And before we discuss normal landings, I want to show you something. Let's talk a little bit about using flaps. Notice here that flaps permit lower landing speeds. This is extremely important because these lower speeds and higher drag reduce your landing distance. Now you're probably wondering, well, what does this have to do with a power off landing? Well, flaps are a tool that can be used to steepen your descent, just like you see in this picture here. So what would I do if I'm making a power off landing and I get low on glide slope? Would I continue to lower my flaps? No, that would be dumb. That would steepen your descent even more. And if you even could make the runway without adding power, you'd want to keep the flaps right where they're at. And this is what we're talking about when we say we're making a partial flap landing. And these are no big deal. We do them all the time. At least you're supposed to anyways. But when you land with reduced flap settings, you lengthen your landing roll. Now the question is, how much? Let's take a look at the landing data in the POH from my Cessna 172H. Before we do, you'll notice here that it says power off. That's talking about touching down with power off. And if you touch down with anything other than idle power, that's also going to lengthen your landing distances. Let's say to make things simple, there's no wind, we're at sea level, and it's 59 degrees Fahrenheit. What's our landing distance if we land with 40 degrees of flaps? 520 feet, right? And what about 20 degrees of flaps? In this plane, we don't know for sure, but we know it's longer because the airplane flying handbook says so. And that's because there's less drag to help you get the airplane stopped. Okay, maybe that's not fair. Let's take a look at a newer Cessna 172 SP POH. One thing nice about these newer POHs is that now they're required to be written with the information in a certain order. That way it's easier to find the data you need in flight. So on newer aircraft, you'll find the performance section in chapter five. Yeah, here we go. This one's a lot better. Someone actually spent some time on this chart. Now let's say we land with our flaps at 30 degrees. There's zero wind. It's 20 degrees outside and we're at 2000 pressure altitude. As you can see, with these conditions, we need 630 feet of ground roll distance. Now, this POH actually has a note. If landing with flaps up, increase the approach speed by 9 knots and allow for 35% longer landing distances. So if we landed with zero flaps, our landing distance would increase to 850.5 feet. That's a 220 foot increase. And that says nothing about the floating that usually happens with zero flap landings. And that's why these are labeled ground roll, because you need to factor in where you intend to touch down. Now, when I land with zero flaps, I've noticed that I typically float 200 feet or so beyond my normal touchdown spot if I don't make any changes to my aim point. I personally believe that this is why the practical test standards allow for a 200 foot touchdown zone on the power off 180 instead of the 100 foot zone for a short field landing when you get your CFI. They expect you to land with some flaps on a power off approach, otherwise they'd probably give you a little bit more to compensate for the floating. With that in mind, I'd never be shy to add 200 feet to my ground roll to calculate my total landing distance. 
So for example, if my ground roll is 630 feet and I'm super confident in my ability to hit a 200 foot landing zone, that would make my total landing distance 830 feet. So I know if I float an extra 200 feet with zero flaps, I should really add 400 feet in that case. So now we're talking about 850 feet ground roll plus 400 to get a total landing distance of 1250 feet. So if I land with all my flaps, I've got a total landing distance of 830 feet. But if I land with flaps up, that's 1250 feet. We're talking about a 420 foot difference, guys. And you can see how this could become a huge problem if you're landing on a short runway. Now, with all that in mind, on power off landings, you don't use power to control your descent rate anymore. Instead, you primarily use flaps to do that. And because of that, it's very common to land with partial flaps when you're doing those. And as you just saw, there is a noticeable difference in the amount of runway that you need if you make a power off landing and you don't get all the flaps down. I do want to mention that power off landings are really important to learn and they could potentially save your life. And every pilot needs to learn how to do those. All right, we'll run the before landing checklist. Seat belts on, fuel selector valve on both. Flaps up for now, mixture best power. Throttle set for now, car beat off for now. Landing and taxi lights on. We'll get the rest to beam the numbers. One five alpha, short final, runway one seven. Benita traffic, Skyhawk 3148 X-ray, left downwind 17, Benita. I want to be a little bit tight here. We're doing a power off landing. Idle power, car beat on, first notch of flaps. One, two, three. Are getting slightly pushed into the runway, and I do want to turn somewhat early this time because I've got some heavy winds. Benita traffic, Skyhawk 3148 X-ray, left base, 17, simulated engine out, Benita. All right, turn to base and final here. We're flying best glide speed, 65 knots in this airplane. And we're a touch high, but that's actually good. I'd rather be high than low, so I'm going to slip it out instead of using flaps. Because once you put more flaps in, you're pretty much stuck with the flaps you got. A little slow, or sorry, a little fast, a little high. Slip it out, slip it out, slip it out. I'm going to lower more flaps now because we're definitely going to make it. I'm going to lower all the flaps because we're definitely going to make it. All right, I'm keeping my hand on the power here even though we're act simulating engine out. Trying to land on that first stripe there. A little slow. A little balloon. A little firm, but that's okay. We made it. That firm touchdown was kind of a result of that power off landing. I bled off all the airspeed and in an attempt to make it to my stripe, then I kind of had a firm touchdown because um, I had a high sink rate. And that's another reason why those things are kind of dangerous if you're doing them as normal landings. Now, maybe you've never considered all this before. I want to draw your attention to Part 91-103 of the Federal Aviation Regulations. Here in the first line, it says something kind of interesting. Each pilot in command shall, before beginning a flight, become familiar with all available information concerning that flight. This information must include the runway lengths at the airport you intend to use and the following takeoff and landing distance information. If your airplane has a flight manual that has takeoff and landing data in it, you need to know that information. Trust me, I get it. You're going to be able to land a Cessna 172 on 99% of runways, but you're required to know this information. And what if you need to minimize your landing distance? All right, so let me introduce you to our little grass runway here in Benita, Oklahoma. It looks pretty big from here, but let's take a quick measurement of this thing to see how long it actually is. All right, so we're here at the end of the runway. And it looks like the runway is about 950 feet long. And if you go off the end, it's hard to see here, but this is actually a pretty good sized ditch. And uh, you wouldn't want to go off in that. And because of that, I would never even think about landing on this runway with less than full flaps. In fact, this runway is so short that uh, I actually have my aim point there at the end of the uh, run up area. That way I can ensure that I land in this touchdown zone right here. And uh, these cones are about 200 feet apart. So as you can see, if I flew this approach without power and I didn't get all my flaps in, that could really screw me over um, by lengthening my landing distance there.
All right, so this time we're going to put it in the grass, and I am going to use power because I want to be sure that I get all my flaps in this time because we need every bit of flaps, and we need to touch down right at our airspeed. That way we don't land long. All right, there's our altitude. Bonita traffic, Skyhawk, 3148 X-ray, left downwind, 17 grass, Bonita. All right, seatbelts on, fuel selector valve on. Both flaps are up for now. Make sure best power throttle set. Landing and taxi lights on. We'll get the rest to beat the numbers. Okay, I see the runway there. It's very, very tiny. All right, we're beating the numbers. Throttle set. In the wide arc, first notch flaps, car beat on. Pitching for 70. I'm going to drive it out. One more potato here because I want to make sure that I'm lined up on a good glide slope before I start heading down there. All right, turn base. Bonita traffic, Skyhawk 3148 X-ray, left base, 17 grass, Bonita. All right, 70 knots, I'm high. Lower some flaps. I'm a little long, but I did that on purpose because this grass is super short, and so I want to make sure I'm on a good glide slope and a good, the perfect speed as I'm coming down. I'm going to go ahead and lower all the flaps because I'm high. There they are. Turn and final. Benita traffic, Skyhawk 3148 X-ray, turning final, 17 grass, Benita. All right, here we go. And my aim point, I'm actually going to put my aim point right at the edge of that um, little run-up area there. And that's going to allow me to touch down the first little bit of the runway there. And you may not even be able to see it from where you're looking right now, but it's there, I promise you. I want to fly right at 60 knots. If I land one knot fast, that's going to help me. That's going to make me land long, and I don't want that at all. A little high. There we go. Power is going to control my altitude there. I'm getting a little slow. I'm going to pitch down, and I'm going to power, power at the same time. Once you start controlling the glide slope, you kind of got to do both. A little fast. Good altitude, a little fast. Right on my airspeed. I know I'm going to make the runway. Idle power. I need to land no later than those first cones, otherwise I'm going around. All right, so flaps up, simulate maximum braking. I'm mixing procedures here because we have a really short runway. There you have it. So I stopped her after two and a half cones. We'll measure that here in just a second, see how, how long that was. So right here, two and a half cones. That's what, that's what we did that landing in. All right, so somewhere about right here is where I was able to get the airplane stopped. So it looks like about 620 feet of runway is what I needed today. But I have landed on this thing when the grass was wet and good grief, I about scared the life out of myself. The airplane skidded all the way to the end and I almost ended up in that ditch. And I guarantee you, if I wouldn't have had full flaps in, I probably would have ended up in the ditch. Let's go back to the airplane flying handbook for just a minute. Let's look at what it says about normal approaches and landings. Notice, normal approaches and landing procedures are used when the engine power is available. Then, we see over here on the base leg, we should start or continue the descent with reduced power. Notice, they don't say idle power here, they say reduced power. And I tell my students, somewhere between 15 to 1700 RPM is a good starting point until you get a good feel for the airplane. Now, notice that once we're on final approach, we're using pitch and power to control the rate of descent and our airspeed. Now check out this little note. Wind may affect the gliding distance over the ground. The pilot does not have control over the wind, but corrects for its effects on the airplane's descent by adjusting the pitch and power appropriately. So the wind is another factor that affects our rate of descent. And if you're not using power to control your descent, then you really need to be able to judge the wind and use your flaps appropriately. All right, so here's the part I was talking about earlier. A well-executed final approach includes reaching the desired touchdown point at an airspeed that results in minimum floating just before touchdown. To accomplish this, both the descent angle and the airspeed need to be controlled. This is one reason for performing approaches with partial power. If the approach is too high, the pilot can lower the nose and reduce the power to maintain the correct airspeed. When the approach is too low, the pilot can add power and raise the nose. 
While the proper angle of descent and airspeed are maintained by integrating pitch and power changes, an untrained or inexperienced pilot may try to reach a landing spot by applying back elevator pressure without adding power. However, attempting to stretch the final approach by raising the pitch attitude alone is almost always a bad idea. Using pitch alone causes significant increase in angle of attack and decay in airspeed that leads to an excessive rate of descent or a low altitude stall. It is possible for either or both to occur. And as you saw on my power off landing, my landing was slightly plopped in because of that very reason. So now you can see that power off landings can actually be a little bit dangerous if you're not taught how to do them correctly. Okay, but I can control my descent angle with a slip, right? This is true, and a forward slip is a powerful tool, but check this out. Some airplane manufacturers recommend against slipping with full flaps. They say it can be dangerous or something like that. So what if I'm flying in one of these airplanes, and I've already lowered all my flaps, and I'm high because I'm flying a power-off approach? Should I still slip the airplane, or should I accept a long landing? I'm not going to tell you what to do in this case. It's just something else you need to think about, especially if landing distance is a factor. In addition to all this, what do you think the chances are that you'll lose an engine right here on short final? I'm not a statistician, but I guarantee that you're much more likely to encounter a short field scenario than losing an engine in this very, very small area. Because if you use your flaps properly, you should be able to make the runway almost everywhere else in the pattern. And the FAA is a lot more concerned that you know how much runway you have and how much you need. And typically, engine roughness comes before engine failure, in which case you may be nowhere near a runway. But if I know I'm having issues, this is when I would set up for my power off landing, even if the engine is still running, so I know for sure that I'll land on the runway. Good grief, why does he care so much about landing distances? If you enjoyed this video, I bet you'll like this one as well. Smash like on your way out. See ya!